So as we are anointed today, be empowered for supernatural wisdom. Be empowered for supernatural wisdom. We also recognize that um, diligence or hard work is a requirement for leadership. How many agree with that? Okay. C.S. thou a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. And that requires strength. That requires strength. There is no exploit anywhere under the sun without a demand on human energy. And those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Daniel 11.32, that means exploit will always demand energy input, energy investment, strength. And among the seven spirits of the Lord is the spirit of might. Everybody say might. And when the Spirit of God, God comes upon you, He quickens your mortal bodies. He quickens. Romans 8, 11. If the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit which dwells in you. So you are imbued with unusual energy. To be able to deliver the exploits appointed to you. Unusual energy. One of the biographies I studied was that of John Wesley. Up until the age of 80, he was riding on horseback, cross country, horseback, preaching the gospel. At the age of 80. If you have ever ridden or gone on a horse before, every step of a horse is a gallop. Riding a horse is a two-way ride. You are riding the horse, the horse is riding you. That's why I don't like riding horses. It's a two-way ride. Everybody's sweating. The horse is sweating, the rider is sweating. Now, here was a man at the age of 80, not flying a plane, on a horseback, And landing on the horseback to preach. We have a patriarch in Nigeria. It, it will be 109 next month. And he's still preaching. Every Sunday morning he's on the pulpit. He still calls on the phone. He knows how to call numbers. It's 109. Now you see, unusual strength. They came and said to Jesus, somebody must have given him food because we are all hungry. He sent us, sent us to go and buy food in town. See how active he is. Jesus said, I have a mate to eat you don't know about. He has been empowered with the seven spirits of God among which is the spirit of might. Ability to go beyond the usual. To go beyond the normal. To go the extra mile without any stress. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. And then we have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. If you like, call that discipline. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? There was a spirit working in the man called Joseph that kept him highly disciplined in, his, in the private privacy of his life. He said, but I fear God. The spirit of the fear of the Lord was walking in his life. The discipline required to, to realize his destiny. Genesis 39 verse 9, he said no to Potiphar's wife. Chapter 42 verse 18, he said, but I fear God. So the spirit of the fear of the Lord was walking actively inside him to help him maintain his destiny, secure his destiny, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. That talks about discipline. 
And then the word said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. What happens? They are the sons of God. So the Spirit of God is the custodian of the plan of God. So visions and revelations and directions, they are manifestations of the Spirit of God in a man's life. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. In the last year, part of my spirit upon all men, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions. It will be the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear from me, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's vision. So when you are empowered by the Spirit of God, you are empowered to walk in visions and revelations. So if you look at the leadership covenant that we try to expose or, or, or expand on in Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 18, we talk about direction, we talk about discipline, we talk about, I mean, we talk about wisdom, we talk about discipline, we talk about diligence. All these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now see, the comforter means the helper. He helps you beyond your natural limits. You can attain to some level of wisdom without him, but he empowers you to ascend to what is beyond your natural limit. That's what he does. So expect today by this anointing to break the barriers of natural limits. When the wisdom of God came upon Solomon, all the kings of the earth. How many of them? All the kings of the earth came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. All the kings of the earth. So that's how the anointing empowers men and women to reign. You are empowered to operate in wisdom. You are empowered to operate by visions and revelations working in, with the guidance of the Holy Ghost every step of your journey. You are empowered to operate high-level self-discipline. You are empowered for hard work. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. But I labored more abundantly than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. And if you check the New Testament, Grace and power are interchangeably used. Great grace was upon them. With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. As 4, 33. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace, great grace, great power interchangeably used. So the anointing upon Paul made him to exceed the others in his labor. I must tell you this, it's impossible to run my schedule in the energy of the flesh. I will have crashed longest time, but I'm fresher by the day as I do the job. There is an enablement of the spirit that helps to enhance your level of accomplishment by enhancing your level of investment. But I labored more abundantly than them all. I've written about 60 books. We have sold over 6.5 million copies. And I'm blessed. The grace to do it, the grace to get it out, and the grace to see it impacting on people. But I, I think this audience should know I've never earned a dime from books in my life. But I'm blessed. The testimonies are my earnings. I'm blessed. It's so important for you to know these things work. Now, let me quickly point, point something here, here. I was talking to our leaders yesterday. You need to hear it. There is nothing they give you in this world that guarantees your prosperity. It is what you give that does. Whatever they give you is bread. And if you are not wise enough to separate the seed before you eat the fruit, you will eat the fruit and the seed. And then you will need another fruit tomorrow. And if they don't bring it, you will go hungry. And if they forget completely, then you are dead. <laughs> what they give you can never qualify you for prosperity. It's what you give that does. 
So every time they give you something, no, it is, a, it is essentially bread, but inside that bread is some seed. So separate the seed. Don't eat the bread with the seed. Otherwise, we'll keep looking for it all the time. This is so important to know that the anointing is not a ceremony. It's a spiritual system of empowerment. Empowering, empowering you for, to, to be able to subscribe to the demands of your royal destiny. You are able to subscribe to it. That kind of man walking that kind of way, like I read to you recently, I mean, there is no system, there is no natural way of coping with that. There must be some level of enablement at work in him. That's the way it works anywhere. After today, work will be delightsome to you. Yeah. Reading will be tasty to you. Yeah. Searching will be your delight. Yeah. Sacrifice will be a thing of joy. Yeah. That's how the anointing empowers us for enthronement. That's what I've called the anointing of the king. You see, you will always need to be prayed for to be healed if you are not working and working hard enough. I used to tell people, I said, the reason why malaria parasites cannot stay in my body is that the temperature is high. It's not able to survive that temperature that is constant, not that it wasn't cool down. No, the temperature is constantly high and so it chokes the parasites and kills them and then they disappear through the feces. <laughs> Amen. You know, one day my wife touched me and he said, Your body is warm. I said, You better rejoice. If I'm cold, won't you cry? <laughs> if I'm cold, won't you cry? I'm created warm blooded. It is dangerous to become cold. So I have to maintain the temperature of the Creator's mandate so I can keep alive. It's so important for you to know these things are not possible by the energy of the flesh. It's not possible. There is no way the wisdom that comes from God will not beat the wisdom that is gathered on the earth. There is no way. Because whatever is from above, what happens? It's above all. And if you are created to be above all, then you need the wisdom from above. So by this anointing, the wisdom from above answers in your life. Amen. When that wisdom came on Joseph, the king said, Can we find a man such as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as wise and discreet as thou art who we may set over this business. Genesis 41 verse 38. That from above startled the king. The king couldn't handle it. It was higher than what was available anywhere in the land. Because it was from where? Above. When Daniel, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego came under that influence, the Bible said they were ten times better. Ten times higher than their colleagues. How many times? 